First of all, giving all praise and honor to Yah, the creator of the universe, Yahweh Abraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Israel. I, hi, my name is Michael, and maybe you're wondering why I am introducing myself. Well, I heard, saw and heard a video, and I was being accused on this video by Prince Keskiahu as being a liar of lying about a situation or incident that took place in Israel. Well, and then many might ask, why am I responding at this point in time? I'm responding because someone deemed me a liar, called me a liar, Prince Keskiahu, in fact. So had Prince Keskiahu wanted to know the truth of the matter, he could have gone to uh, Prince Gabriel Gadot and Prince Rakhamim. They are very much aware of the fact that Brother Eliyahu was set down. Prince Keskiahu stated in that video that Brother Eliyahu was a senior teacher and an elder, and he couldn't be set down. But the point is, he should ask those two princes, uh, Prince Gabriel Gadot and Prince Rakhamim, whether or not uh, they were sent and came to me, approached me, that the three of us, our mission was to go to Eliyahu and tell him that he could no longer teach anymore. In 1975, I have a letter that the elder wrote to me. And I'll read the letter to you, even though it's personal, but I will read it to you. Because this isn't about a lie, it's about the truth. It says, Shalom, Shalom, Brother Mikhail, Israel, and family. And this was posted June 21st, 1975. And we put it on the video that you could see the date and, all, and everything else uh, that's on the letter or in the letter. So this comes to let you know and let you hear from me. I am well at present time, doing fine. The Most High has really been with me. I give him the credit for everything. So I hope when you receive this letter, it will find all of you doing well also. I'm putting forth a riddle. He says something here that hopefully you will hear and understand. So I'm putting forth a riddle. You know you can cut down a tree, even with the ground. But if you don't dig up the root, it will sprout out again. And most times, it will be more than before. And what he's saying will be greater than before. And he's referring to himself. It was cut down. And I am the witness to that fact. And so, Gabriel Gadol and Rachamim. And so again, to continue on. And most times, it will be more than before. Because it shoot out more sprigs. So I'll be and the rest are fine. I know I should have written you more often than I have. Now here again, he's telling me he should have written me more often than he had because he hadn't written to me at all. And the point is again, why would Eliyahu, a renowned teacher known across this globe, just disappear all of a sudden if something didn't happen out of the ordinary? Why would he leave Israel after going through Liberia, watching his, his mother, his Ima, pass, and transition to Liberia, his uncle, and then coming on to, to Israel to undergo the things that he underwent and the pain and grievances and things that he suffered, that he would just disappear. He wasn't set down because he was an elder loved by everybody, and a great teacher. Why then did he leave Israel? Why did he make the journey to Israel if he was going to return? He was a teacher, the elder, the elder teacher, a person that, like I say, well respected by people all over this globe. And he left Israel without saying a word to any of the congregants, to any of the people in the community. Why then, I ask you, would he have done such a thing? And that's what happened. That's what took place. 
nobody in the community knew that Eliyahu had left Israel. But anyway, he goes on to state that, I know I should have written you more often than I have. You have kept the faith and been tried in the fire, so you will be paid for every good work you have done. Put your trust in, in the Most High and not in man. He won't fail you. I thought I would have been back to Israel long ago. Most High did not plan it that way. So I'm still here in Old Babylon, and plenty of work here to be done. Ziona was here to visit her, and I visited her at her family's and her mother's home, and she was glad to see her. And Ziona was a sister that was a beta, at a beta with us, and went through Liberia with us, and on to Israel. And she returned to America after whatever took place took place. And he's saying that he went to visit her, so he just let me fill him in on all these details. She is a strong sister, yet after all she had to go through. But the Most High is making ready to take over now. You're looking for the fulfillment of the common market. So this letter proves to us, or should prove to someone and everyone, that here's a man, after undergoing all the different uh, difficulties and things of being at his age, went to Liberia, and Liberia wasn't a... Uh, uh, a joy in that sense. The joy was having our faith and love for our creator and our way of life. But the point is, we suffered. And, but we held tight, we held on because of our faith in our creator and the belief in that everything was going to work out just the way it had been prophesied. So again, uh, as Brother Castiel say that he was an elder, and the elder teacher, and he couldn't be set down. Why, again, I asked the question, posed the question, why would he have left Israel? In fact, I didn't even know he was gone until a few months later. Because at that point in time, he didn't trust any of us to that point. So he left without telling anybody. And then later, in 1975, I guess approximately, he had left, he wrote this letter. And then again, his family. In his transition, I have an obituary, his obituary in my hand. And on the back of the obituary, there are two acknowledgments. Okay. And in both acknowledgments, the first acknowledgment says, the family wishes to thank their many friends and relatives for the many kind expressions of sympathy and all acts of kindness extended to them in cards, donations, confident messages, prayers, and many other expressions and concern during their hours of sorrow. May Elohim forever bless and keep each of you. Shalom, peace be unto you. That's the first, <clears throat> excuse me, that is the first slicker. That is the first acknowledgement. The second acknowledgement is this. Special acknowledgement. You, you did get that right. Mm -hmm. And the special acknowledgement says, special notice is given to Dom Davis, Elazar, Miss Valerie Lee, Nidra Logan, Miss Carter, Mehir Israel, Nathaniel Kennard, David Tate, Melvin Harris, Michael Davis, Larry Williams, Mark Hosman, Candice Handy, Rabbi Shmuel, Abdi and Devorah Levy, especially Nathaniel and Maxine Boyd, Valerie Lee, the Lois Ballinger, and nursing staff, an administration of Columbus Park Nursing Home, the Israelite Board of Rabbis, Midwest Region, and the Israelite World Federation, IWL. Now, Israelites are intelligent and wise people. Again, I would pose the question, 
why isn't it? Or why isn't there an acknowledgement of a representative from the KOY? Since the elder wasn't set down and couldn't be set down and was such a great teacher held in high esteem by the community, why wasn't their representation from the KOY? We read that in order for you to see and hear from the family. Why wouldn't they recognize a representative from the KOY or the KOY? And why wouldn't the KOY have sent representatives to this brother's trans, uh, transition being a leader in our community? There was none. There was no representation. And so the family acknowledges everyone that represented their families, the individuals, or the organizations, or the Bate Knesset, or whatever. But for some reason, as you can you have seen, we videoed the back of it from the family, and there's no recognition or no acknowledgement of the KOY or any representative or any card of sympathy, anything of that nature. So if this man was held in such high esteem, why wasn't any representation uh, from the KOY present? So with that, hopefully, and just like I said, some may ask, why now? Well, why now? Uh, my responding is because Prince Keskial called me directly, because I saw it in the video and heard him directly. A liar. I'm not a liar. So if these words of these, uh, this letter and this obituary doesn't prove uh, that it's something that's not so factual being said or stated, then I guess we are all still blind. With that, I say to you all, Shalom. I. Zahoshua Amariel, blessed by Eliyahu, now called Rabbi Hoshua Amariel, attended Eliyahu's class at Rabbah under the teachings of Moshe, Abdi, and Brother Samuel. At Rabbah, we were told the story of Eliyahu's flight from Israel as a result of the coup that took place by ben -Ami. At this time, Joel and Brother Israel stood up to defend Eliyahu during the time of what was called the coup of the kingdom of God. After the death of Job, Eliyahu fled and returned to America as written in his letter. At that time of the letter being written 1975, Benjamin began as Eliyahu said, the work of the Most High as becoming the prophet that would lead the people around in the wilderness for 40 years. That's written in Deuteronomy 13, 1 through 3, that the Most High would raise up a prophet to test the children of Israel. And the beat and the children of Israel was tested for forty years in the wilderness by Elder Benjamin, fulfilling Ezekiel twenty, thirty three forty four. And now at this time, Benjamin has passed, and now we're calling everyone up to Zion to pray.